Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the celebration of 60 years of music and ministry. Please feel free to join us as we worship and praise God. Somebody told me, told me that the joy they had. 
Good evening. Good evening to Reverend Banfield, the senior minister of this house. Good evening to all the lovely adults, our teenagers, our children. Good evening to my family members. I know they're here somewhere. Yes, I'm seeing a wave in the back there. So my brother is somewhere there and somebody. But God, oh yes, and I'm seeing my two brothers. You see, we are from a privileged home. You didn't know that, huh? Privileged home. We were privileged to be introduced to God early. That's a privilege. We were privileged to receive the right kind of discipline. That is a privilege. So you think it's a privilege if you can go to board in school? Nah. It's a privilege to know God. And this evening, you know, I was reflecting on my brother's 60 years of serving and worshiping in song. And um, I thought about playing a pun on a word. You know, all of us with smartphones have Waze. And I had an interesting experience with Waze recently. I was trying to find a place. And Waze got crazy. And I said, you know what is happening there? What Waze doesn't understand is, apart from all the, the science and all of that, it needs to understand the Trini way of giving direction. It is when you reach by the yellow house. You see the corner there? Not that corner, the next one. And when you get there, you're going to see a man who's selling paper. So if he didn't sell that day, you could get lost. All right? So, but I said, you know, when we look at these words, and so I thought of ways, and I said, what kind of ways is teaching us scientifically how to find places? But God talks about certain ways that we need to be familiar with. He says to us that there are some ways that will give us direction, but some of those directions might be wrong. So we should be careful to understand the ways of God said there are ways that seem right to man. And I'm paying a pun on the word, eh? It's not the W-A-Z or Z if, if you're from Errol's generation, not mine. Z. Um, there are some ways that will lead to destruction. And then he says, this, the, the scripture also talks about there are ways in which children should be brought up. Mm -hmm. And if you can find those ways, the same way you find I'm a, I'm a jigsaw puzzle person. I play online. And when you find that spot, you hear click. And that's what God says with our children. You put them in that way so that when they reach it, they'll fulfill what God has them to, to do. Why am I telling you about ways? You see, very early in life, my brother, Errol, was placed in the way that he should go. I thank God for my parents. I thank God for the San Juan SDA school. If he remembers that well, that's where he started there. And then the various concerts we had at home. I am um, singing challenge, so I don't sing too much, so I stay in the background. 
and they used to have all kind of singing. I could hum a little tune in the back there. But it is that that we are looking at 60 years down the road. 60 years down the road, he's placed in the way to follow God. I thank God for my parents, expert parents, expert by excellence. They understood that if you didn't serve God, you're not going in that church and sing. Remember that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You're not going and put on my clothes. It, that became her clothes, my mother's clothes. It never was your clothes, eh? You're not going with my clothes to go and say you're singing anywhere else if you can't sing in God's house. And God directed him in, in a direction to, at this time in his life, be able to say, hitherto had the Lord helped me. He has put me in a way to bless him. He has put me in a way that will cause me to let others see him. Not him, J. Errol Lewis, but the Lord himself. And so as you train your children, as you find your path in life, think about ways, not the navigational tool, the app, but think about the ways in which you should go, because when you find that, you'll be of benefit to the kingdom of God. God bless you. Cheryl alluded to the fact that my mother was very clear. I could not put on her clothes and go and sing anywhere else. So when I went to church to sing, I was always unorthodox. I never did, you know, like the country and western, you know. Lord, build me a castle and that, no, that wasn't me. I like jazz. And I used to upset the pastors because I sing in jazz. I would go up and say, you but we ain't really come here 
as much for entertainment as for praise and worship. Feel free to join us. If you can't sing, clap. Yeah? And if you can't clap, nod your head. Come on. Say it again, say, smile when you're saying it behind the mask. I can see it. I'm looking at your eyes. Hey! Praise the name. Say it. Hey! Praise the name.
So we came here to praise God, amen? We social distancing, but you know, you can give God some praise tonight. Hallelujah. Amen.
praise the Lord. And it's okay to shout it out. Yeah. You see, when the devil attacks us and we get in with problems and we're feeling sick and we, we're barely hurting us, we just shout it out. We just want everybody to know. If somebody vex you, you just set up your face. You just want everybody to know. You just shout it out. So if God is good and fighting for us, shout it out. Shout it out. Special good evening to you, Minister. Minister Donna Cox, Minister of Social Development and Family Services. Thank you for gracing us with your presence. Well, you know I grew up in church, right? So, I have all kind of little song days to teach me in church. <laughs> But I never sang it like how they like me to sing it. So here we go. I have a song that Jesus gave me. It was sent from heaven above. There never was a sweeter melody. It's a melody of love. I have a Christ who died on Calvary. Jesus washed my sins away. And he put within my heart a melody. They gave me for you. This song is there to stay. Could I get to say the end?
I wouldn't even call it in. <laughs> Let's hear what the drums have to say. Sunday school song. Now, you know, I'm on Facebook. I'm on Instagram. I'm on Twitter. I'm on nothing else. Because <laughs> I don't know how to do the rest. <laughs> the only TikTok I just do is when I'm doing jazz. I don't know anything about them social media thing, but when I put my picture up, people always remark about how I smile. Well, I could tell you, you know, but I have to go outside. So here's what I have to say. People always ask me why I smile. If I tell you, it will take a while. So instead, I just tell you in song And it won't take very long This is the reason I smile I have this blessed assurance That Jesus is mine Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine I am an heir of salvation Purchased by God Born of His Spirit And washed in His blood This is my Yes, you got it right there This is my my sight I see angels descending and they bring from above echoes of mercy and whispers of love Praise 
all is at rest. <laughs> I am my Savior. I'm happy and blessed. I'm watching and waiting, looking above, filled with his goodness and lost in his love. Could you join us? Hey? think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me my soul cries out hallelujah thank God for saving me when I look back 2019 2020 2021 and you understand the issues that pertain to those years and I'm still standing this is my story this is my song this is my story.
grateful to God. I'm grateful to God. I'm grateful to God. I'm grateful to God. I'm grateful to God. Yes. Yes. Years ago, he knew what he was doing when he made me. And years ago, he knew about tonight. Yeah, God knew years ago about tonight. Yeah, and I'm thankful that he has seen it fit to have me as part of his, plus, his program. Thank you, Lord. Just let's deal with something here. Renaissance has been in existence for 30-something years. So I've been doing music for 60 years. I've been performing with different gospel groups. I've done things all over several parts of the world. Forget that. Who cares? It done go on. But the Bible says, correct me if I'm wrong, Pastor, true religion is when we take care of the widows and the orphans. Mm -hmm. You see, a lot of us think we're religious, and we express that by the face we put on. So we walk about like if we suck a lime. <laughs> and we think that makes us religious. Or we dress in a certain way. And we think that makes us religious. Mm -mm. True religion. Jesus said the time will come when he would say, would people come to him and say, Lord, Lord. And he say, hold on. I don't know you. I don't know you. And you say, well, you know, I used to go to church and I, I, I used to talk nice to people and, and, I, and I, you know, and I, I used to go and pray for people and heal the sick. And say, no, I, I don't know you. Because there were hungry people that you didn't deal with. There were thirsty people that you passed by. There were people that I placed strategically in your way. And you ignored them. You see? It says, as much as you do it for one of these, you do it unto me. Why am I telling you all of this? We're going to take an offering. It's not going to this church. I thank my pastor when I came to him one day, very quietly, and I said to him, I want to celebrate 60 years of music and ministry. He said, fine. He said, um, you know, we don't charge to come in here. I said, I know. I ain't charging. It's free. And then I went back to him afterwards and I said, listen, pastor, there, there is someone a gospel musician, singer, worship leader, who passed away. He has left a wife and children. So wouldn't it be a nice thing for us today to give an offering, which will go to him, to his children and his wife? I know you would agree. So my pastor agreed, and I called the young lady, and I will not let her stand because we're not here to make no spectacle. Yeah, I called her and asked her, can I do that? And she said, thank you. And I said, fine, we'll do it. We'll give it to you and be done. Is that fair? The ushers will come. Can I ask you, Brother Tommy, to pray before we take it? Yeah, I use my mic. Oh, good. No trouble. <laughs> Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for this occasion. We give you thanks for the people who came out to support it. We thank you for blessing us financially so that we can be a blessing to others. So as we pick up this offering, we say thank you again. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The band.
Thank you very much for your contributions. Hallelujah. We worship you.
The song I'm going to sing was written by a young man hiding in the back there, sitting down there. Cameraman put it on him. <laughs> Owen Shade. Owen Shade. I walked into the studio one day and I heard the song and I said, Owen, I want to record that song. And he said, sure. And so I got them together and we learned the song, we recorded the song. And he released the song. It's his. It's called He Is Here. of the Lord is in this place. He is here. He is here. The presence of the Lord is in this place. So
Oh, in shade. I had not recorded for 20 something years until I walked into the studio and Owen had his song. And I, I did it. 20 something years earlier, I had recorded and released an album. And the song that I loved the most on the album was written by my youngest brother who's sitting right here. Stand up, let them see you. I'm your big brother. <laughs> this is my brother, Alan. Hugh Alan Lewis. We have a different kind of arrangement, the two of us. We love one another like that. And he wrote this song. God, you've been good to me. I, I sing it. I've sung it all about the place. And um, I tell people it's my special song. It's really his. But we family. <laughs> and my mother said, live as one. <laughs> Can I have the track, please? But I can't live without your love, your love, Lord. You've been so good to me. Even though I don't deserve You have been there just to love You took all my sins And washed them away You came in my heart On that very day Oh God You've been so good to me I can't explain it but I can't live without your love you've been so good to me There were times when I went astray When I thought I'd do things in my own way But you welcomed me back With open arms All the time you were searching and searching And protecting me from life's harms Oh God You've been so good to me I can't explain it but I can't live without your love Lord you've been so good to me I can't explain it but I can't live without yeah 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 whoa whoa I can't explain it But I can't live without your love Without you residing in me I can't explain it But I can't live without you I need you to walk with me I need you to hold my hand I need you to guide me Every day I 
I know that 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 I can't live without your love, Lord. No, 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 I. Can't live without your love. So, speaking of songs that were written by other people, <laughs> I would like to share a song with you. That was written by Mr. Daniel Hamilton. And it's a song that has really, the more that I sing it, especially now, because I've been going through a rough patch. But the words of this song just keep bringing me back to what's important. So I pray that you connect with God tonight in a new way as you listen to the words of this song. Amen. I found a place where I am satisfied and in this place I soar upon
Gabriel Maynard. <laughs> One of the things about Renaissance, I keep telling people when they, they join Renaissance, we're not into the performance. We're about people. We want to sound good. We want to do what we do well. But don't fool yourself. It's not about that. It's about people. It's the development of people. And 60 years later, and um, 30 something years with Renaissance, I am not really the person in charge. Gabrielle Minard deals with all of the administration with the singers in Renaissance. Tamika Johnson is the person handling all of the vocal arrangements and all of the management of all of the music that we do. Derek Cadogan is the man that pulls together the band and they have to listen to him. Would Corey's just step out a minute, please? Corey's Teixeira is the person in charge of dance. This young lady. Corey's Teixeira in charge of dance. Thank you, Corey's. What we do is we develop, we, we, we work, we do stuff, we develop. And you know, I, I don't like people to join Renaissance because they want to star. You know, we go out your light. <laughs> We're here to lift up the name of Jesus. So. Free to join us if you want to. I love you, I love you, I love you, Lord, today because you care for me in such a special way. That's why I praise you. I lift you up, I magnify your name. That's why my heart is filled with praise. Saying, I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you. I love you.
please. I don't know if you, you see the picture in your mind's eye. But think about this. There's this animal in the wild that's just roaming all about. And all around him is desert. It, it's parched. It's, it's dry. It's arid. And this animal is thirsty. And all it can long for is just a little bit of water, a little thing. You know, sometimes we let we like to ask for big things. We went plenty this, Lord, I want a million. But there are people who just want enough for today. There are people in this community who just want enough for tomorrow. This deer is panting for the water. That's the way our Christianity is supposed to be. That's the way we should seek after God. Not in a lazy, fair way, but in a way as if you're thirsty. As if all you need is to drink from him. It's as, if, as if when you get to him, you don't want to move because it's an oasis of strength for your body. You alone are my heart's desire. You alone, you alone can quench this thing that I have inside of me. You alone, Lord, you alone are able. You alone, you alone, you alone, you alone, you alone. your hands and worship come on we can do it we can do it you alone God you alone you alone you alone you alone you alone you alone one two three and you
you, Lord. We praise you, God. Thank you, Lord, that your ways are higher than our ways, that your thoughts are higher than our thoughts, that even though we go astray, your love is there to pull us back. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. His love is more than good.
Your love is more than gold. Is God good or what? I love him more than anything. I tell you the secret. When I think about the love of God, it baffles me. Because there's nothing that I am that I can barter with him with. You know? There's nothing that I have that I can go to him and say, okay, because I have this and I have that, I'll exchange it with you so that it will make up for what you've done for me. There's nothing that I can do. I love him more than anything. Could I have the words up, please? I 
like this before. Let me hear you, let me hear you, let me hear you say, say, I love you. I love you, Jesus. I love you, I love you, I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. Lord, I love you. I know. 
Still in warning. Your tomorrow might be now. Might be now. I have a friend. And she was supposed to be here tonight. And I had to send her the link. Because she couldn't come. Because she was in a meeting with another friend on Monday night. Monday gone. They had this group meeting. And while they were in the group meeting, the friend said, my foot hurting me, I think I need to put it up. So they said, go ahead, put up your foot, you know. She put up the foot. The next day, she's dead. She never knew there was a blood clot. That's why she had the pain. The tomorrow came sooner than she bargained for. Your tomorrow, my tomorrow, could be any time. Does not take a major disease. Sometimes it takes an idiot with a car. Your tomorrow could be now. The thing is, salvation is not something that we have to work up ourselves for. It's a gift. The gift of God is eternal life. It's a gift. Anytime you have to beg for gifts, it ain't real. Mm. This gift has been freely given. But it will never be yours until you accept it. It can exist as a treasure. But unless you accept him, it will never be yours. Tomorrow may very well be today. I had to make that decision for myself. Notwithstanding the fact that I grew up with a strict mother and father in my home. And as Cheryl said, mommy said, I'm not putting on she clothes to go and do anything else. And I had opportunities. But... I have found a joy no tongue can tell. Hmm? It's like a spring springing up in my soul. That's why I smile. You may ask me why I serve the Lord. I serve the Lord not because of the stuff I could get but based on the relationship I have with him, it's who I am. You may ask me why I serve the Lord. Tonight, this is about it. Is it just for heaven's gain? Or to walk those mighty streets? of gold and to hear the angels sing and all those things are good or is it just a drink from the fountain that never shall run dry I, I, I. Oh, just to live forever, ever and ever In that sweet old by and by Let me tell you If heaven never was promised to me Neither God's promise to live eternally Just having the Lord in my life Living in a world of darkness He came along and brought me the light If there were never any streets of gold Neither land where we never grow Just 
friend down through the years and every time I cry he dries all of my tears it's been worth just having the Lord in my life six days living in a world of darkness he came along and brought me the light if there were never any streets of gold Gentlemen, the daughter of Reverend Malkia, yeah. <laughs> whom I rescued from Pentecost. <laughs> oh, good. I had to do one for the night. Good evening, everyone. Did you enjoy your evening? I am here to say thank you to the persons who helped us to enjoy this evening. So bear with me, please. I want to thank Owen Shade and In Shade Studios and the San Juan Government Secondary. These are the rehearsal spaces for both the dancers and the singers. I send out thanks to 98.1's management and the announcers. Special thank you to Woodbrook Secondary School right across the road from us. Thank you to our choreographers, Dion Batiste, Alicia Archer Bodkin, who did her choreography online from New York, and Liberty Burke, one of our dancers. Thank you to the Lewis clan. And Errol siblings are right here. They are. Always oh, stand up, let people see all in there. People feel we don't exist. Those are just some of the siblings. That's just part, eh? Special Mommy, thank you. Mommy had 10. <laughs> well, I mean, I know you're jealous, eh? <laughs> Carry on. Thank you to the musicians, the singers, and the dancers. <laughs> and I deliberately left home for last. Home is Holiness Revival Ministries. I want to say a special thank you to Ronnie Dixon and the technical crew. Aaron, Dave, Michael, Akila, Marlon. I want to say thank you to our hostesses. I have to call them for the evening. We had Maxine and we had Janelle and we had Jackie. Thank you very much, ladies. Thank you to our security personnel, Paul Carter and Brother Dove. And a very important part of home, our dear pastor, Pastor Erland Banfield and Sister Jennifer Banfield and the board of directors of Holiness Revival Ministries. Pastor, we thank you very much. We thank you very, very, very much. We are grateful. God bless you, folks. We'd like to invite Pastor to come and pray for us at this point. This is the man, and we heard a message this morning that shepherds me. He's been working diligently to make a Christian out of me.
Good evening, all. It's an honor to be asked to pray for an honorable gentleman like Brother Ira Lewis. But before I do that, let me just take up uh, Cheryl, Dr. Cheryl. If started off with this thing about ways, the ways that we use to go where we don't know where we're going. You know that ways? Well, she started to talk about that ways. And then she started to talk about the ways of God. Well, let me tell you one of the ways of God. The Bible says that he works mysteriously mm -hmm. and he performs wonders. Mm -hmm. So here is a wonder that he performed in keeping with the evening's program. A member of this congregation was a friend of Errol Lewis. <laughs> and uh, one Sunday morning, I don't know what the arrangement was, but the friend went to pick up Errol to bring him to church. The friend drove and stopped outside there. Errol says, where are you going? He says, I told you I'm going to church. He said, well, this is not where I go in. I go in Woodbrook Pentecostal. So the friends say, well, this is where I go in. So Errol decided, well, he's going to join his friend because the friend drive in. He had no choice. So Mr. Errol Lewis walked into Holiness Revival Ministries how many years ago? Father's Day, 1997. Father's Day, 1997. <laughs> he walked in here on Father's Day, 1997. And what's the date today? <laughs> Since then, he has never left <laughs> Holiness Revival Ministries. So this is how God works, you see, mysteriously and performs wonders because the friend that brought him here stopped talking to him, gone, and he's still here. <laughs> God works mysteriously and he performs wonders. So it gives me pleasure this evening to pray for him in this 60 years of ministry. And the thing about it is he's only 67 which means he started at seven years serving the Lord. So yes, I'm going to ask you to put your hands together in congratulating Brother Errol Lewis. And having done that, I'm going to ask you, please, to stand. And I particularly listened to how you were clapping for Errol. Now I want us to put our hands together and clap for Jesus. If you were expecting me to put up my hand to stop you, that will never happen. Not when Jesus is involved. Hallelujah. Precious, wonderful Savior and God, we thank you so, so very much that you are a good, good, good God. Your word tells us that every good gift and every perfect gift comes down from the Father of light in whom there is no variableness, no shadow of turning. The most precious and perfect gift that you have given to us is Jesus Christ himself. Apart from that, Lord, you have given the church, your body here upon earth, gifts. 
the gift of the apostle, the prophet, the evangelist, the pastor, the teacher. These are gifts, Lord, that you have given to the church to bring up the people of God into the people that you would have us be. Apart from that, Lord, you have given the church gifts, several gifts. And I thank you this evening that one of those gifts that you have given to this church is our brother, Errol Lewis. He has been a blessing to this church in so many ways. He has been a blessing to me personally. And so I want to thank you so very much for the years that you have given him here. And I pray, wonderful Savior and God, that you would give him as many as is your will for him. We thank you that we have just celebrated his birthday, 67 years. We pray, wonderful Savior and God, that you would give him many, many more years, as many as his heart desires in accordance with your will. And so, precious Lord, we lift him up before you and we pray, wonderful Savior and God, that you would bless him with good health, you would bless him with good strength and many, many more years. And of course, Lord, I would be failing if I don't say, and his wife also. And so, precious Lord, you know what you have put into this man. You know what you have given to him, the talent that you have given to him. And we see, Lord, how he invests this talent in your kingdom. Not for profit. He never takes one cent for what he does. And whenever a collection is made, it is always to give to others. So, precious Lord, we thank you for this blessing that you have blessed us with. And we ask wonderful Savior and God that you would keep him in good health, in good strength. In Jesus, the wonderful name we pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, sir. You may sit there. So Margaret said thanks, and I just want to say thanks to you. I want to say thanks to the Renaissance musicians led by Derek Cadogan. Please put your hands together. Thank you to the Renaissance singers, all these, and the last addition who grew up in this church, but I didn't recognize her, Hadassah. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the Renaissance dancers. Thank you, God bless you. Peace. We love to pray. 